Our speaker today was born in Kum province in eastern Tibet in 1965. He became a monk in 1977 at age 12. He left Tibet in 1986, but continued his Buddhist studies in India. After 20 years of study, he achieved the title of Geshe in 2005, Geshe Tsering Dondrup, and his English translator Labsong Dondrup, who is also the spokesperson for the monks, was born in 1979 and became a monk at age 10 in 1989. Both live at the Drepung Losling Monastery, primarily at its location in India, but also at its location in Atlanta. So, like Adam has already introduced, uh, Geshe-la uh, and me from the Munosli Monastery, where we have um, more than 4,000 monks so studying there in India. Um, we, after 1959, after, you know, the problems with the Chinese communists, uh, you know, so we were able to uh, re-establish the monastery in uh, India where start uh, f start with maybe 200 monks and now we have such a great numbers of monks coming from Tibet and um, yeah so we do have many Chinese monks in our monastery as well so it's not that we are totally against you know Chinese people we have a very beautiful Chinese people even one of my best friend is also a Chinese. <laughs> really, <laughs> seriously. So really we are very close, we have a lot of common things and we share a lot of things with them and you know it's problems with uh, some of the people from the government. So this I want to make sure. <laughs> so in their way anyway, we look at the, our situation as uh, one of uh, you know we look at the situation from the bright sides. Uh, after the, you know, 1959, we have more friends in this world, and <laughs> we were able to see more people, and you know, we were able to benefit more peoples through our understanding. We were able to share our cultures in a more, you know, uh, effective ways, and it really some the philosophy of the compassion and the wisdom is not something that we have to be kept, you know, isolated, but it, it really needs to be shared with the people. So that is the purpose of living a compassionate way of life. So that's why we, will, we really understand it from another, another aspect. So we really, we really enjoy being losing our country. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I <laughs> slides down there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we belong to the Jebun Losel Monastery in based in India. So uh, Gishila has already accomplished the the monastic studies. We spent about fifteen to twenty years, and after after twenty years studies. We finished the monastic studies in our, you know, in our, m you know, monastic kind of, we call it monastic university, university, but there's no kind of registered university, <laughs> not in India, not in Tibet. We are just a refugee in there, but we call it monastic university, like, a, you know, the, the Nalanda tradition, preserving the Nalanda traditions. So we studied the uh, uh, philosophy through very uh, intellectual ways and mainly through the debates and uh, which is very uh, you can learn the things f through debate which is very which is a great fun to debate and there's always even you know we from our monastery we have more than 3,000 or 4,000 monks and uh, some other monastery we are there has uh, 2,000 monks 3,000 monks and sometimes we have a joint debate, and where you can see a, a thousand thousands of monks and debating, and uh, 
once you, you know, uh, respond in some funny way, everybody laughs together. Ah, but it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but it really doesn't make sense to some people. <laughs> it's a tough question. This is that they, you know, you know, messed up something in there and uh, they, you know, through the intellectual debate, sometimes they have to say like, I'm not, I am. <laughs> There's no one. There's no chair. Sometimes they have to say like this. Then divide, divide, divide. Sometimes they have to mess up everything. So if, you, if it is the case, then it will be in that way. Given that, there will be the case. Given that, there will be the case. This way, the techniques of a debate is to, uh, you know, to enrich your understanding about the reality and to try to associate your mind more towards the reality and accepting the reality and seeing the reality and then to, through this way you remove the <coughs> mental obscuration towards seeing the reality that way you enlightened yourself. So th that kind of the studies we, we do in our monastery so we have this system of studies we spend about 20 you know 20 years to accomplish or hold the studies of Buddhism. So Geshe-la and I accomplished all this uh, education. So I am kind of just graduated, but still I have some more years <laughs> to review and uh, you know to get higher uh, studies, tantric studies, more deep into house tantric studies. So this is just introductory to our studies and monasteries <coughs> in, in India. So um, then Gishila is going to talk about mandala, so which you will definitely enjoy uh, knowing the significance and the purpose and the symbols of the mandala. So thank you for having us here and also thank you for showing such a great number of people interest. Thank you so much coming here. So today are such a great numbers of uh, you know uh, people who showed up it is really is uh, I really appreciate that uh, you guys were able to make it and uh, also I understand this is really a great sign that we really care about inner peace so this is really which is uh, kind of uh, crucial to this modern world to have more people value the inner peace so I really uh, appreciate all of every one of you to be uh, to have this kind of interest in knowing more about Mandela and the significance so in in terms of inner peace not only this mandala and uh, philosophy that we have from the buddhism but there is a many many religious who also talks about inner peace you know the compassion loving kindness forgiveness so those are actually really all those religious are all the religious message instruction are focusing on developments of inner peace so so i really we all uh, we all need to appreciate others uh, religious as well and there is no uh, a single religious or say belief or say 
uh, kind of method that is the the best method to everyone. So your medication is the best medication for you and there's no a common best medication for all. <laughs> so that's why we can say you cannot have that medication. You have to, if suppose someone has headache and you, you it, if you feel it like you need to uh, cure the, the headache, you have to give a medicine to headache and, and not for and the, you know, food ache or something, some other things, <laughs> so stomach ache or something. You can't say that you have to take the medication for the stomach ache that I used to take. You can't say like that. So you have to appreciate what he is doing and what he or she is taking and in the same like foods there, some have some allergies to some other foods. And so we have to appreciate and appreciate and we have to go by kind of whatever the appropriate that he his body and is associated with and his body is favorable with. So that's why there is no point to disrespect towards other religious. So we really need to appreciate all the religious and all these religious are very important to enrich our understandings about inner peace. So we have to cherish all these value, all these precious instructions and Buddhism itself is not complete. So we need another radical <coughs> understanding, approach, perception, you know, to enrich our understandings. To this way we really need to appreciate each other, religious to religious, and because um, the founder of the religious are those who really cares about inner peace of all the beings, all the sentient beings. And if the followers of the religious make the, the source of peaceful, peacefulness turn this religious itself into or some problematic, then there's no use, there's no point to follow that path. So that's why I really appreciate all the uh, religious that ever exist in this world, and not only the Buddhism, all the religious carry the same, the essence of peace. Oh, Jazan, the religion was on it, Zambali Digan Yaji, Chi Mubo, and Jordan Javayana, that Bej Raga set over Yajinia, led the Yorede, Dinam Dalia, non sem the Yajid Shrachi, and Marjada Sen Hazang Begay, the Mabo Chadi in Zuzani, Chipendo Yaji Chiba Najig, and non sem the Yajid Namatuayana. Marazo Namshi Jilea, that be Gangish of Chair, that be Nangashi will let her Jada. That singing Ganga de Sailia, she been to Jubo Seto Yamare, then Susan Nan sang it big Ganga Sea de Lea, that Chuju Kandaji in Bayana, Chino Masunja, the Lavja de Gizzi, Namajini, Chuzo Doni Dama, say Ganga Sea, the Tafi Yashi Chadi Susani, Marazo Samalo Begi, J. Digole, Shuja, Begetum Chadis. So um, the inner peace that we have to value, um, you know, especially in these modern times, why we need to value the inner peace is that we are actually high, we are actually experiencing highly developed world in terms of material, in terms of technology, and the development that the technology and the material development that we experiencing are basically more than enough so the material gain <coughs> all the the technology material gain is not really the final solutions to our it's not the final solution to our problem so it's not the final answers what we are looking for every individual human beings in this world and all the sentient beings, even the animals, are looking for some kind of sense of peace, happiness. And in order to gain an answer to that happiness, people try to accumulate wealth and try to have a fancy house and cars and a building and all the stuff. But we have found such a great numbers of people billionaires, millionaires who are very, very much depressed than really poor people. <coughs> it really proves that the material development is really 
not the answer for what we are looking for. So that's why happiness is only just comes from our mind and contentment. Happiness is just the feelings that we enjoy. And when we have a nice car, we directly enjoy the feeling of belongingness of that car, the color of it, smells of it, <laughs> and the speeds of it. And <laughs> so we enjoy the name, the fame. That makes that the feeling of that first we encounter, first thing that we enjoy is this feeling. And then we try to find the things that gives the feeling. So once you were able to change something in there, switch something in there, you don't need this kind of you know, development or too much things. So we are really more than enough. And if you keep doing things in that way, just find out something, peace, uh, happiness, in within the material developments, you will never ever find from there. And since we are now be going beyond the limits of the material developments, it will probably cause more troubles. And we need to balance, we have to be wise and how much peace it can give you. Suppose we, you buy a new car, how much peace it can give you and how much troubles it can give you to attachment. Even people may have a bad look at the car, you get angry. <laughs> Of course, if someone scratches, you can die. <laughs> so, how, you know, peace it can give you, and compare with the peacefulness that it can provide you and the problem it can provide you. If you really are wise, you'll see if these, the problems that it gives you and better not to have that. And but, the abandonment of the physical thing is really uh, not the uh, good ways to, you know, practice the, to find the peace. We have to be so balanced. It doesn't mean that you have to give up everything, go to some forest and wild. <laughs> we have to be so balanced. And uh, but the more value that we have to give it, it's about the mind. It's about the mental peacefulness, not just merely accumulating the wealth. Is not you know good way to find a peace and the main thing is from in inner inner you know movement inner change so that we have to take more care about that and then we do need because of a biological and because of the how we exist we do need <laughs> foods and shelters and everything we need everything you know, the physical things and the material things but it needs a limits. It has a limits that uh, favorable to your body and environment, family, everything. So if you keep doing, finding, you know, accumulating material gains, material things, then there is you will never find satisfactory in that. Sanjibi, Chi, Nanola Yabagi, Dezeni, Dosho, and Nazo Bagi, Dezeni, W. Rajada, Dini Nanada, Nazo Concharnari, Hajanga, the Nipe, Sabada, Jachawa, the Gerard, the Yoga Zani, the Dango to Hungo and the Jerry, the Pagazi, Kana, Kansaji Kolea, Jue, and Yamu, Nevaina, Shrapo Kavur, Yenayako, Kan, Pagazi, Jesi, consisted of the Jays. So Today, uh, can you hear me in my broken language? <laughs> okay. So, um, so today we are supposed to talk about mandala. So, so in terms of uh, inner peace, just inner peace, we have the philosophy from the very from the very simple understanding, very simple, very average understanding to the most subtle understanding, most subtle, um, you know, the transformations. We have all the teachings that is that could be divided into two. Uh, that is uh, Tantrayana and Sutrayana. 
So Tantrayana and Sutrayana. So, Sutrayana includes the general Mahayana teachings and Theravada teachings as well. So in, tantra, in Tantrayana teachings, uh, which is really uh, profound and vast, uh, kind of unbelievable um, teachings, and uh, this mandala is, uh, belongs to these Tantrayana teachings. So, and there is many, many ten ways of practicing than Tantrayana, and Tantrayana teachings always try to condense the whole thing in a single word, like mantra, and they try to expand to the fullest possible extensions of the universe. So, so that's why it could be taught in many different ways. It could be taught in sounds, smells, and um, of course teachings and philosophy and arts. So it could be taught through the five objects of five sense that we, the, all the happiness and sufferings comes from. We have five gateways to receive the sufferings and, and the happiness. Those are the five get five gateways to enter the happiness and uh, you know the negative and the positive things enter from that five or five sense five gates. So we have all the uh, teachings from coming from every everyone every, every individual doors get doors entering into you. So that's why the mandala is also a visual art from where we can be blessed uh, with the, the deepest understandings of our insight. So Mandela um, tells very deep about Tantrayana and also it talks about the very general understanding. It, talks, it really tells us about the very average uh, kind of, you know, balancing uh, way of our life, way of the way how you have to carry kind of, you know, the mental, uh, intellectual, and the way how you have to create peace, try to create inner peace, and how you can, uh, you know, remove the obscurations that is the, 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 the obscuration that blocks you to see the, the real, real existence of the things and phenomena. Oh,就是那，中国式的什么，个别个，活的，开始来了吧？那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那，那
the, in terms of the mandala itself, even in this uh, sand mandala, we have various numbers, countless numbers of, you know, the mandala, sand mandala. But also, the just mandala itself, we again have some uh, different uh, ways to create mandala. Or in a sen in sense, we have um, body mandala, we have mind mandala, and we have uh, drawing mandala, we have uh, karma, karmic mandala, and we have, mm, we have uh, visualizations mandala, you know, stab stabilization or visualized mandala. So there's body mind, body mandala, mind mandala, visualizations, visualized, visualized mandala, and outer mandala, inner mandala, and secret mandala. So there's many, uh, the many ways you could create a mandala. So in fact, your body is a mandala and your mind is a mandala, and even your eyes could be a mandala, and it could be a kingdom of all the deities and angels and gods. So this way, you are using every single energies that ever exist in your mind and body, that ever exist even on the single atoms that we belong, so to bring a real transformations. So mandala is kind of, you know, Trans it helps you to transform your mind and body and we are now the kind of energy that floats the body and the mind in a certain way. That's how we're born as human being. And in from the dimensions of these energies, there is, you know, a lot of transformation could pos you know, possible you could be transformed into a celestial body and you could be transform yourself into you are transformed as the king of the universe or say become a kind of a god you you become a god by yourself because every one of us blessed with buddha natures so if there is not that kind of a nature you cannot discover it in order to discover it first you, there is already something needs to be exist, otherwise there is no discover. So the, there is, the mandala is kind of a road maps to reach at that center point and it helps you to discover more into yourself and transformations. We're just not talking about just this life, but we're talking about eons and eons of life. And eons and eons life changes could be happen in a single, in a in a single instance of minutes. And in a single instance of minutes, you could have a expansions of eons and eons lifetime. And even in a single <coughs> atoms, there is a universe and a mandala itself. And even in the universe, it could be included in just a mandala. So there is a lot of this kind of complicated. Uh, energy, how, so do those are taught in the divine <coughs> understanding and perfect understandings of the waves of energy, how we can, we, how we can change the directions of the energy and how we can condense it, how concentrate it and make ourselves, you know, liberated, make ourselves enlightened, make our, ourselves, uh, you know, free, total free, total removals of any single instance of negatives, pure, to purify ourselves. So there is a definite a way we can be awakened, we can be fully enlightened. So that's what mandala uh, tells. And the mandala itself, t seeing and hearing, knowing about the mandala itself is helpful. It, the mandala name itself, seeing the mandala itself, gives you something, sends you some energies, and it, it makes you open your true natures. So that's how the, seeing the mandala itself also become a kind of healings. Well, 
Non cavo c'è di vero. Anni, leggi, leggi, giungo se è di, 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 giungo se è So that the reddish was you were. T. Moron in Barry, Tanangazo, let on board the Zulia. That Tanangazo did the garage of Dunsegi Jungo. Dunsegi Jungo said that Bagelia Begedo, and a G Sambo. The Jagi Begaji Jupsaya. The Jagi Bagelia Judango, Gangitani, Kobegi Royang, Zaji, and Begaji de Karsegur. Dunsegia Sujini, Digima. Nima Shizu, Delia Ma Chilabje, and Digi Ma Jungo Lua, his son, Delia Dunsi Jungozigo. Naranzo Dana let Ambo to Zula Jungo Sigi Nani, Dunsi Jungo Yashi Chadavis. So, um, out of those many types of mandala, so all of them are equally uh, kind of powerful enough to, you know, open up yourself to. Awake yourself to the instinct powers, or the two natures of ours, which is the, the you know enlightened natures. So, but the sand mandala uh, believes to be one of the best art, visual art, that helps you to, that helps most of the beginners uh, to, you know receive the blessings of the mandala, the general mandala. So, so the, the, the saints that we use for creations of a mandala, it comes from, uh, you know, um, uh, comes from earth, uh, and uh, it's a, what we call a marble, marble, it's grinded, grinded marble, grinded sands, and before we uh, um, take it from the earth, we need to do some rituals, asking the permissions from the nature and blessing of the natures and invocations of natural spirit and some kind of promising. And many things has to happen from, f for, for the f you know, from the very beginning point, and then we grind it into with uh, ritual ceremonies and we blessed the saints and we put the colors uh, it's a non toxic colors mm, yeah it's because we have to be careful with the color because finally we have to release it to the auctions to the water flows and to, so make sure that these colors has non non toxic uh, you know properties otherwise it will hurt many other animals instead of become healing to become <laughs> toxic to them <laughs> so so anyway we have to do a lot of transformation so because we have to be so balanced you know not too much extreme from the really real existence and you don't want to you know you don't want to jump from the high thinking that you are flying <laughs> You have to make sure you, you know, associate with the reality and the existence, how the things go in. According to that, the things, the movements of the things, the change, the activities of the uh, things and the events, we have energy and practice happening in the frames of this, uh, the, the mode of existence. So, that way, um, the saint has been blessed and uh, before doing the mandala we monks need to do a lot of retreat and only when the monks are good enough to visualize and to the dissolutions of power into and releasing the power into the circles and um, you know making the mandala blessful enough powerful enough to heal others and the same way it heals you. So then only we are supposed to create the mandala. Oh, just on that, Jungo de Dana, not Jungo de Jada, Dunsig Jungo Chadi Ure. That the Nigi Jungo de Chadan Rabo Chevayena, Tamboya Digitizama, 
So, you can see the mandala, it's a kind of, you know, flat and the surface of something, but through the imaginations, you are building a kind of the kingdom of enlightenment. It is sometimes exists on the top of the universe, and sometimes it exists in a single atoms. So, through your meditations, through the powers of understandings about the reality, first you have to imagine, first you have to see all the existence are empty by its natures. Out of that emptiness, you gathered all the energies into one, that is the thunderbolt, Vajra foundations. And combining all the energies, one Vajra, Vajra or say the thunderbolt, which plays as a foundation, on top of that, you build the, in the kingdom of enlightenment. So, um, this kind of, you know, uh, it mainly needs the understandings of the emptiness and the, 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 the unions, what we call it, the unions of, it has to be understood as the, just the manifestations of the union of emptiness and the compassions. So, the very, the natures of our existence, the the energies where the, all of us floated is actually the mind consciousness, the mind, the kind of energy which is basically illusory and empty. And seeing that reality, the mind empty, you can transform everything from there. And we have some scientists that they believe that um, you can you can have a diamond in your hand out of this when you make everything because of mind power you can collect the whole the, the atoms and you know the heliums and all this stuff so you can combine all this together by mind power because the mind power is flows <coughs> with those tiniest those subtle kind of substances so you have, you could, the mind has uh, this special power to make the things move and gather together. And so this, if you are really powerful enough, they said, you can, you can make a diamond in your hand. <laughs> so, so this is a really interesting and it's really, uh, it really talks a lot about the reality and what we meditate and what we visualized and uh, all the things become empty, and out of emptiness, there is energy gathered together, like that. So emptiness is not just something that we believe. It has to be established through logic, evidence, proof, and applications of a lot of intellectual things. So basically, we are all empty, and we see each other empty. But we still, at the same time, we hold on to something that is our misconceptions. So when you, th it's very easy to understand s in some way. When you find out someone, you will never find it from their existence. Suppose you see me as a Tibetan monk, monkey, <laughs> <laughs> down there. But when you 
try to point out me, you'll either point out here and here or somewhere. And when you point out, find out, try to point out, you will never find. And just you find my nose, and nose is not me. Nose is not the monk. <laughs> you know, like that. Emptiness. Basically, we all are empty by very existence. So, but at the same time, although it's empty, we make it something solid out there, which is not there. So that place has a foundation where we have attachment, we have anger, we have a jealousy. If it all these are empty, the things that appear is just illusory and something kind of a rainbow, a rainbow. It's a made up of a rainbow. It's just there's nothing to hold on to it. But you see the empty nature. There's nothing to hold on to it, attach. This is the reality. Because of our misunderstanding about that reality, we have all the negative things, and it, that kind of negative thoughts creates a negative foundation. The misunderstanding builds negative thoughts, and then negative thoughts creates a solid things out there. You know, all, even the car accident, even the mosquito bites you, <laughs> you will finally see this is the negative consequences of your thought. Energy can bounce back to it. You know, energy, the karma, karma, we talk about the karma. Karma is something people misunderstand it. Karma means, oh, it's your karma, not, I don't care like that. If you say, if you think you don't want to care, you are accumulating bad karma. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to care, you have to care about others. The more you care about others, like I mentioned before, there's a, not a single substance as atoms, things that we are made of, a lot of atoms. There is not a single atom that is not comes from others. Everything depends on that. Everything comes from the efforts of others, even the, of course, food and clothes. Each and every part of my clothes includes a lot of efforts from millions of sentient beings. And your body, made up of million millions of insects or something, how do you call this? Animals inside, I don't know. The tiny, tiny creatures, made up of just, we are just made up of tiny creatures that we feel like I am, but <laughs> it's the home kingdoms of another tiny <laughs> creatures. So we are so energy, energetic. It's made up of uh, millions, billions of sentient beings out there. We have to feed them, we have to treat them well. And if you, if you treat them well, there is a good result, comfortness. And in the same way, everything is going in that way. Business, work, job. If you go to home and wash your clothes and clean your house, nobody's going to pay you. If you go to other rooms and clean some other people's house and wash, you may <laughs> get some <laughs> payment. So everything is working that way. Computer science, everything is working in that way. But we feel it is something solid out there, which is unrelated, which is not, which not to be careful for myself like that. So we need to open up to the reality and follow the energy. And there is more compassion, and there is more wisdom, and there is enlightenment. This is just something that we can understand right now, where we are kind of an, an enlightened. You know, we are, we are not enlightened right now. So then we follow that path. There is an unbelievable, you know, uh, paradise or kind of enlightenment, fully enlightenment that we can experience one day. Okay. Korangi begi, good Luyada. Yana, Kusime and what the name I not dig any Sabe, Sabe Luya, the Negia, and G. Chazo de Vore. Jadan digi, Tago de Layani, taking Nanolayata, Gajig de Tahitaji Lua de Voda. Yango Dinalaya, Rumbushi Rishi, Kolo, Raji, and in Novo, and in Doje, or the Negi begi Chojil Luya, 
Dengan yang aku cuma dah wajib juga. So, so in the mandala. At the center, sometimes we put the, the deity itself. The here, it's, this one is also a compassion Buddha's mandala. The one we are creating is also a compassion Buddha's mandala. But there is a tiny little bit change, but they could have a certain changes that has been in mentioned in the text. We cannot have a, you know, radical changes, but they could have some certain kind of changes in there. So here we put the, in this mandala, they, they put the, the, the symbol, the lotus symbol, that represents the Avalokiteshvara. So it's not just the randomly we put it, but Avalokiteshvara himself appeared in front of the practitioner and blessed with this lotus. And one day, if, if just in case you have to represent my energy, it could be a lotus. So in that way, the lotus represents the Avalokiteshvara. Basically, lotus represents a lot of things. Lotus, because of the, I slide a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he is tall enough. I'm not tall enough. <laughs> so I <it> floats here. <laughs> so I enjoy floating. <laughs> so you will see a monk floating, not monkey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so they, we put the, um, you know, the, uh, our locate the, instead of putting the real image, we put the lotus flower in there. So it starts from the very center point, and you will see such a beautiful circles, and the energy circles, you know, the flame circles. So he starts from the center point, so energetic circle, and here we put some symbols, you know. Here, basically, if you, we have a very long time, we can put uh, the images of the Buddha uh, in the center, and also the, the, the four direct, the, you know, the four, four side, we can put uh, the Buddha, four, four Buddhas as well. We basically have to put four Buddhas, but instead, since we don't have much time, we put uh, symbols. We can. It's a. It's a. Uh, it will. It will be a. You know, good mandala if you can put the sim symbols. It's um, easier for the, the creator of the mandala to finish in a certain time. So they put it only the symbols. So here we put uh, one images in the middle, the compassion Buddha, and we put symbols in the foresight. So that kind of energy starts from the centers, and it, that energy, since we are, because of some reason, maybe this world, the universe, could be seen from some another dimensions. If you are powerful enough, you can switch your, this dimension to another dimensions. So that's where this energy transformed us from this unenlightened dimension to enlighten dimensions. So that's what the mandala starts from the center and putting the Buddhas, the compassion Buddha and all those Buddhas. All those Buddhas are basically believed to be exist uh, somewhere. But finally, finally, you have to understand those kind of Buddhas are just manifestations of your compassionate energy and wisdom energy, all those stuff manifestation of your energy, your instinct, your true natures, because you are, you know, the uh, blessed with the Buddha nature. So you are already Buddha that needs to be discovered. And once you become a one Buddha, the old Buddha would exist in there. So that's how manifestations of the Buddha ne needs to be uh, manif meditate and visualize in that way, because that way, it helps you to discover, you know, uncover something. In that way, that, that visualization helps you to, you know, the wake up you to that, and visualization helps you to discover yourself into that forms and energies and, and that, you know, that kind of powers. So this way, 
seeing the image itself gives you some instinct information you might not <laughs> notice, but it gives you something that how it heals. Oh, Jazanda, Digi Cholo Delia Dabbe, Medajo, Medashi, Gogo. Oh, yeah, Nijada, the Tungur said, the Sharaga, the Nibe, Tajumoda, Nibachumo Sharachadore, then in the Zama, the Tungur said, Jada Amjo Tubada, and the Pegi Migin Tonda, Panjewada, or the Tedanga Nibe, Sharagani, the Les Ambosayada, and the Susola Yapeg, you guerred to be the Miller to Juada, the Nigia, Missy Colia, Chichi Shuizing, Juolia. So uh, each and every color so you can see and the every single symbol has a great meaning uh, to complete the whole, you know, the com to complete the one, the, the circle of energy that we, that ever exist, that ever exist in this universe. So we put all the symbols, symbols, we need to put all the symbols and so it constructs, it's, it's, it's made up of those sim symbols and it could be, you know, it could be seen through three dimensions and when you see the three dimension mandala, it's like a, it's like a house, it's like a, your body is a house and your mind is a house mm -hmm. and it's not something, the house that we build with the bricks and all the stuff, but it is an enlightened house. And that this is the purifications of our, there's two ways of uh, enlightening. Environmental enlightening and, how to say, mentally enlightening. We need to enlighten both of them. And if we are fully enlightened, we see all of other sentient beings, angels and Buddhas, all the stuff, and maybe, you know, like a, magic things, all the stuff, powers and sorrows, everything we see that. And at the same time, we will feel the, uh, what, what kind of thoughts that's going on in others as well. So how this way, in that way, the we, Buddha and uh, you know, enlightened person can help others to, be, to, to enlighten themselves. So this kind of, uh, you know, mandala completes completes whole the uh, you know the whole set of the energy circle that ever exist. Oh yeah, let the this is also this is mandu jada. The in the zaman samalo the be dona shivu jijin in the nihaya the jawa dale ya. Ani thamalo le ya to chesu shivu yes. So we don't have much time. So we actually done. <laughs> we actually the time is over, and so. We wish we have uh, more times to explain each and every symbol, symbols, but the, the things that we explained are really good enough for you to at least understand what it is, and it really helps you to knowing the, uh, the significance, the purpose uh, is also more uh, helpful you to receive the powers and the energies from the mandala. So thank you so much, you guys being so patient. Thank you for coming here. <laughs>